Open your Bibles this morning to Second Kings, <coughs> and uh, just aware of um, children's ministry and, and that uh, time, time wise, but we could certainly be praying for people at the end of the meeting as well. But I have a word uh, for the house, I have a word for this season. So, um, Second Kings chapter um, 6, and it speaks about a time, <coughs> verse 24, that there had been an incredible. Um, siege against Samaria where the people of God were shut up in the city and no one could get in. It's very popular, one of the most popular stories in the Old Testament. So um, many of you would be familiar with it. And it's uh, they're in Samaria and the Assyrians have besieged the city. In those days they had walled cities, they had walls around the city. And um, so people needed to get in and get out to get food, to get water, all those things. So they had been in a time of siege and um, so it says that these Assyrians had besieged Samaria. So the famine was great. And they were eating, um, you know, uh, doves, dung and donkey's heads. They were just starving. They, and, they, and cannibalism had even crept in. And so it was a horrific time. And there was just such a, a, a devastating time for that city. And the Bible says there that um, there was a great famine. And, um, and so that even the king at that time... Um, uh, you know, he, he was um, he was saying, I, I can't, you know, I don't know what to do. And uh, he wasn't a particularly good king at that time in, in this situation. But what I want to highlight is that is the situation was just a very dire situation. That there was a famine, and there was a great famine. And I'm here to declare to you, no matter what's been happening in your life, that the famine is over. The famine is over. No matter how bad, this was a very bad situation. It looked dire, and uh, and so the the um uh, they uh, and at that time uh, they uh, they blamed Elisha the prophet, and they said uh, you know let's go and kill the prophet. And many times when people go through a tough season, you know it's like let's blame the church, let's blame the pastor, let's blame you know let's shake our fist at God even. And, uh, and sometimes uh, there, there's, there's these responses that can come when, when, when it can be a difficult time and it doesn't seem to be any answers. And uh, so they come after Elisha, and, um, but Elisha hears about them coming. And in verse 32, he says, the messenger is coming for me. Shut the door and hold it fast. Is this not the sound of his feet, his master's feet coming behind him? There's people coming um, to blame the prophet, he had to kill the prophet. And so um, he had to shut the door. And um, the king who was coming also says, Surely this calamity is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? You know, what's what's the good of praying sometimes? What's the, what's the use of waiting? And, and so they had got to a very low point and frustration had set in and, and, and just... Uh, looking for answers and feeling like that you know um that they just couldn't see a way through and so elisha's first words in that situation was shut the door and i want to say before ever we can receive a breakthrough from god and move into what god has for us there are some things that we need to shut the door to amen we need to shut the door to the bad report we need to shut the door to how bad the situation looks we need to shut the door to um, the, 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 the natural thinking. Christians, you know, live in denial. And that's a good thing. Amen? There's a time when it's good to live in denial. Where we, where we, we you know, people might say, well, there's no money in the bank. There's no, you know, my family's in disarray. There's terrible things happening. You know, live in denial. Because faith denies the natural circumstances to look to God. So he said, shut the door. And I'm going to say today, that we have to shut the door on being double-minded. We have to shut the door on the pity parties. We need to shut the door on playing the blame game. We need to shut the door on, on every bit of negative thinking to come into what God has for us today. Amen? To be naturally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Amen? So we have to shut the door to what our negative, what the negative circumstances are saying to us. And the Bible says that 
um, the king that, that, that was saying this, why should I wait for the Lord any longer? And sometimes when we've gone through a dark time, a difficult time, there's a sense of saying, well, you know, what is the use? I've, I've been praying and nothing seems to change. Well, I've paid my tithes and I don't seem to see a financial breakthrough yet. I, I, I'm trusting God. And, and, but, um, you know, I want to say that, there, there, that what's the use? We have to be careful about the questions we ask. I remember reading the book of uh, Judges, reading about Gideon, and Gideon was wondering why there was no miracles, wondering why the Midianites were ripping them off. And, and he said, uh, and he said uh, even when the angel of the Lord showed up, he said, well, where are the miracles? And where is the God, you know, that, uh, that destroys the enemy? Oh, I hear about the miracles that happened, you know, in, in with Moses and with, with uh, you know, saints of old. I don't see them now. And the... Lord said to him, go in this your mind. How a mighty man of valor. As I read that, the Lord spoke to me. He said this, stop asking useless questions. Yeah. Stop asking useless questions. Because God's te um, counseling technique was very simple. He just ignored every one of those questions. He said, get going. You're a mighty man of valor, and I'm going to deliver you. Didn't answer those questions, and sometimes our idolatrous, natural, carnal minds are demanding answers, and we're just going to stay there until we say, "God, I don't, I don't understand what's happening." Though we slay me, yet will I trust Him? For I know when I come through this, I'll come forth with God. Amen. And sometimes we have to let some questions go. We have to let some questions go. And so what happened was. In verse uh, 1 of chapter 7, it says, Then Elisha says, Hear the word of the Lord. This time tomorrow shall a measure of fine flour be sold in the streets, and two measures of barley be sold in the streets of Samaria. Basically, he said, This time tomorrow, there's going to be such a miracle of provision that down in the marketplace, in the streets where they sell bread, it's going to be cheap as chips. You're going to be able to buy bread in abundance. There's going to be a miracle. Right to. And I want to say this, no matter what you're going through, no matter where you're at today, no matter what's happening, God has always got something to say and he's releasing a fresh word today into your life. God is never speechless, he's never lost for words and he's speaking into your situation and mine today with a word about a miracle, with a word of breakthrough, with a word of victory, with a word of deliverance. Now the Bible says there that as the word came forth, it says, the captain on whom the king leaned said, the officer on, whom the hand, on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God and said, look, if God would make windows in heaven, could this be? He basically said, what? Is he's going to pull it out of thin air? You know, it's only been in, you know, since the, well, between the Old Testament and the New, 400 years of silence was the rise of the Greek mindset that elevated brains, brawn, and beauty. And the natural mind was considered brilliant. Einstein, Aristotle, Plato. And Plato and Aristotle downplayed spiritual knowledge as being crazy. <laughs> I don't believe that space stuff be. <laughs> Nobody, a thinking person is going to believe it's going to come out of the air. And I want to say this, whenever you're getting ready to have a huge breakthrough, Captain Unbelief will sidle up in your mind and say, how's it going to happen? What? There's no money in the bank. How's it going to happen? You haven't seen the change yet. Have you seen your friends have that change? There will be a fair bit of conversation. If you listen to it, it will rob you. But the immediate response, the prophetic word came forth. You'll see it, but you'll never taste it. I don't want to say this. If we entertain those thoughts of unbelief, we have to shut the door. We have to, and I want to say, why is the king hanging out with the captain full of unbelief? Amen? And we cannot afford to have days where we sit around and have the mully grubs of unbelief and negativity and worrying and fretting have access to our minds. And I want to say this. I don't listen to the news more than once a day. Because you can catch it in the morning, catch it at noon time. Get the 7 o'clock news, get the 6 o'clock news, and just in case before you went to bed, something else bad might happen. Listen to it for you. The bad reports will take you down. Amen? We have to have a good report. 
And so, you know, this word went out that there's actually going to be a, a breakthrough and the, the enemy kept an unbelief mock the very thing God wanted to do. And I'm going to say today, the word of the Lord for you is that God is going to open up the windows of heaven. Amen? He is going to open up the windows of heaven over your life. Our job is to believe. Our job is to receive. And so, you know, the word went out. Many people are in famine. They were, they were destroyed. And the word would have been uh, talked about. And I want to say what happened next was, well, Transformers showed up. There was Wonder Woman, there was Batman, there was Superman, and there was Iron Man. And the superhero showed up and they saved the day. Yay! <laughs> well, wouldn't it be good? I tell you what, if it was a movie, then you stopped it there. It would be a bad, bad movie. Amen? It would be. I hate going to movies where there's a bad ending. I refuse to read a book or watch a movie that has a bad ending. I will ask. You can find it in the comments. It was a great story with a tragic edge. No, I'm not reading that one. <laughs> that's, that's code for it's got a really bad ending. In fact, I was over in Perth uh, with the uh, church and I was with a couple of ladies from the church and we had a day off and so we thought we'd go to the movies and so we, we got our ticket and went and had a coffee beforehand and as usual I said to someone, the girl who was serving us, I said, um, can you tell me a bit, have you seen this movie? And she said, yeah, it's good. You know, it wasn't the ending I expected. Oh no! <laughs> Quick, we're going to go back to the box office, I'm not watching that! And so, we went back and we changed our tickets and the only other movie that was on was Fast and Furious. <laughs> and three middle-aged ladies sitting there with a bunch of young people watching these fast cars. <laughs> At least they had a good ending. The goodies won. The baddies. I came up and I said to my kids, you know, I think Vin Diesel's quite cute. <laughs> or, I'll tell you. I hate bad endings. So does God. And God wants you to know that He has got a blockbuster of an ending for your life. For this season, He's bringing you into. Get ready. The curtain's about to go up on that tree of your life. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter what's happened up to now, but God's got an answer. He's got a plan. He's got a strategy. Hallelujah. He has got miracles waiting to release and the curtain's about to go up on that tree. Hallelujah. And it's going to be a blockbuster. Everything that's blocked your life, Because of those things, you start to live through life. 
Leprosy causes limbs to become numb. Yeah. And sometimes you can go through such stuff that you start to feel numb on the inside. And you know when you're on your mobile phone and you go through a tunnel or some situation and, and then it, it comes out, it's like you're in a dead zone. And sometimes you feel like you're in a dead zone. Am I hearing from God? I don't feel, I don't feel anything. I feel like I'm sitting in this situation. But you see, these men heard the word and decided to act on it. And they didn't look like God's dream team. They didn't look like the key to citywide revival. They probably had a nose missing and an arm off and they were probably just, you know, glory to God. And so as they moved towards the, the, the Assyrians' camp, and I believe it was Batman, Wonder Woman, Iron Man and Superman that showed up because some people have been through a Joseph season in their life. The Bible says of Joseph that he was in the prison for so many years. His feet were put in iron over 13 years until his, art, his, soul, his soul was impacted by the iron. He was the ultimate iron man. He went into the prison one way, but he came out a different way. And he came out trusting God. He went in as an empty-headed kid that couldn't keep his mouth shut and his breath. Bragging about, oh, I saw this dream and that dream, and you all been about before me. And God allowed him to go through some tough times. He came out a different man with such humility. When Pharaoh heard of his ability to interpret dreams, you know, don't dismiss the butler and the baker. Don't overlook the butler and the baker. There are some butlers and bakers in your life. And God can use them. The strategic relationships bring you to a destiny. He was Iron Man. Well, it was Batman. Well, that's got to be Joe. <laughs> he was in such a deep, dark place of contradiction. There was death in the family. There was such such contradiction around about. He would have been down there. There surely would have been bats. <laughs> but if he came forth as a man that we still look to thousands of years later with a testimony that say, God, Look what you did for that man. You can surely bring me to it. He is still preaching. Hallelujah. He's the ultimate that man. Well, who was Superman? Well, that's going to be David. Who had a supernatural promise of a destiny. And yet he walked through the desert. He walked through the wilderness. He walked through times of incredible contradiction. Just escaping from Saul with an inch, within an inch of his life. Yet he had a promise and a promise. He had a supernatural, miraculous destiny. And as he, he allowed God to shape him, he stepped into and brought Israel into its golden years. Hallelujah. Well, who was Wonder Woman? Well, that's got to be Hannah. <laughs> she wondered if she would ever have a baby. She wondered if God was here. She wondered year in and year out, will I be fruitful? And God kept promising her heart that there's a book of remembrance and it'll open for you. It'll open for you, Hannah. The Bible says, as she, as she trusted God years later, that the womb was open, not just one child, no, but five. Hallelujah. I was hearing about these nomadic desert dwellers that were brought to the coast, coastline and saw for the first time a waterfall. And the team, the, the, the team of you know, pioneers who were with them you know, had to move on. And, but they were just transfixed. And they, they said, come on, we can't wait. You know, and they said, no, well, we're waiting until they turn it off. And they said, no, 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 this, this waterfall, it just keeps going. Couldn't comprehend water that was never, ever ending. And I want to say to a world that has been sometimes disappointed, sometimes had setbacks, there is an ever ending flow of God's love and grace that says, I am ever faithful. I have a never ending stream of love. I will never leave you or forsake you. I love you with an everlasting love. And it's, it's a stream that will never run dry. Why sit we here? You might say, well, you don't know my circumstances. You know, we can say in the Bible, oh, Dad, where is your sting? Because we have been going through a test. And I know the season we've been in, 5774, is the year of the open door. We've just turned the corner into the year 5775. 
And in the Hebrew culture, they believed that the pictorial picture of the Hebrew letters was a prophetic picture of the season we were in. And so the picture of the open door was the past season. And many of us were excited and many of us did step into a new season. But this year is called the year of Ayin Aleph. And it's a picture of the open door with a hand, with a symbol called Yod, Aleph, Yod. And it's, it's um, I believe, a season where those who have, like Abraham, hope against hope. When you hope against hope, that means that there's nothing else around to be hopeful about. It says Abraham's hoped against hope. He staggered not at the promise of God to unbelief, but was strong in faith, in giving glory to God, knowing what he promised he was able to perform. He might say, well, you don't know what I've walked through. You don't know what I've been through. Well, I think I have walked through some things. And I want to say to you, God is faithful. And the hand, the, 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 the hoping against hope, you see, God wants to bring a fresh word of hope. Hope, the Bible says, springs eternal. And hope, the hope to come into our hearts. We need to know that when we hope against hope, when we hope past the point of endurance, it's been the test of endurance. It's that hoping that keeps the door open that the hand of God can come and bring you through into this new season. Amen? The hand, it's a hoping against hope. Because we have a choice whether we can go and go, oh, to me, I'm really ticked off and I've had enough of it. Good old Aussie lady, I've had guts all of that that I've been here. I'm a nice guy. I'm just going to get angry with people and I'm going to blow the church. And I want to say, I'll see you in a few years' time coming around the mountain. A bit worse for me. Yeah. Or you can say, God, I'm going to look to you. I feel like one of those lepers. I feel. You see, God's finally got a church weak enough that he can truly display his glory through. Hallelujah. And so, what you know, there's some things that people are sitting in. Maybe it's a difficult marriage. I want you to know God will take a difficult and prickly and turn them into a warm and fuzzy. Hallelujah. God's got ways you haven't even thought of. Well, you might say, I've walked through some tragedy. Someone, you might be here and you've lost your, your, your husband, your wife. I want you to know God is the only one who can bring into your life something so miraculous, a season where you are so different. Just, just two months ago, two, two months and a me, I was in Adelaide, and, um, and uh, I had five, four siblings beside myself. I got the call that nobody wants to get, 4 to 12 at night. One of my brothers, dear, precious brother, that I love, probably beside my husband and my kids, He's the person I'm most closest to. I struggled, struggled with depression. I struggled with agoraphobia. Loves the woman. Got the call. Mom, this has happened. And the, it is, it's like a, 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 a thump in the guts. It's like a wind. It's like, no, no. Not that precious person. And, uh, uh, as I packed at 2 a.m. in the morning, and as you see, I had to preach the next day. And so I, I preached and I got to the last person who prayed for it. I called the pastor over and I said, My Lord's put me in my heart. This is what's happening. I had to go home. And I want you to know, I asked the questions. I said, It's not fair. It's not that there was no need for him to go that way. But I want you to know this. My brother knew the Lord. He had a deep love for God. He had a, a whole life of depression and struggles. And I want you to know that I said, God, what? How can you comfort my soul through this? I was, I'd see him a couple of times a week. He'd be to dinner with my family on Monday night. I'd see him on the Wednesday. I'd take Wednesday to take him shopping. Flew out Friday that night. And my soul for a season was so much in, in, in automatic part of and I was destroyed and devastated. But I want you to know, only God can comfort your soul to such a degree. But I know I'll see him. He's already in eternity. Here we prayed together every time I saw him. He loved the Lord. He just lost the battle. He just lost the battle. He shouldn't have. But God, in his grace and mercy, immediately, 
you would have been in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I want you to know that God can bring you through tragedy. I want to say this. I can be pretty good out of that God. Well, I'll tell you what, heaven's will be a little more attractive. God says that he loves us so much. Each one of us has been given a free gift of eternal life. Eternal life. Eternal life. And I remember Peter, when we were talking at the funeral, and asked the Lord, what's Uncle Robbie doing right now? And the Lord dropped into her thought, into her heart. He's talking to Paul. The Apostle Paul, my brother, studied the word. He studied, love Paul. She didn't know that. Returning his right, we were returning his library books. The librarian said, was your uncle a religious man? And uh, the title of one of the books being returned was Jesus and Paul. And uh, I want you to know, heaven is a, such an attractive place. Eternal life is an incredible, amazing gift. That God will bring you through tragedy. And I want you to know that all you have to do, all those letters did was begin to walk towards. Walk towards. And if you could have a theme song, a leopard song, it would be um, that old song. When you walk through the storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the night at the end. Training your son to be an abuser. How he speaks to you, 
will be how it speaks to its future life. Deal with it. Is there anyone else up there? But I went back into the house and I pulled my son in and I said, sit down, put your head in. This is what's going to happen to you. That's and so, and you will not be that one running my room. That's it. No more, no more discussion. And I spoke with an old oh, that I didn't feel. And he just sat there in silence. And I went back. <laughs> Sometimes it's not easy to rise up. Sometimes it's easier to have a pity party. And I was sitting there at one time in my, in my pajamas and I was just chilling, you just check out for the day, I'm not there, I'm just running away in my mind. And I started to hear a song in my heart. It was a song I hadn't heard for a long time, but it was a theme song from Rocky. <laughs> da 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 <laughs> And I heard God say to me, I, I got up for you 2,000 years ago. I got up, but I died on the cross, and I want you to get up because I'll get up in you, I'll get up for you, I'll get up through you. Just stand up and begin to move towards victory. Hallelujah. And I want you to know God is releasing miracles of change and hope from heaven. There's a scripture in Proverbs, I want to read it, and a job that says, Therefore, there is hope for a tree if it is cut down, that it will sprout again, that its tender shoots will not cease, though its root may grow old earth and its stuff may die in the ground. That's pretty low. That's pretty much hit the paper. That's pretty much back against the wall. Dead end. It says there, its tender shoots will not cease yet at the, and at the scent of water it will come back. At the scent of water it will spring forth and bud and it will break forth branches like a plant. I want you to know God is saying it's a new beginning. That you feel like, some of you may feel that it hasn't yet budded, it hasn't yet come to pass. I want you to know today, God is releasing an incredible miracle of breakthrough. As those Assyrians, as they go to the Assyrians' tents, the enemy has fled, and they begin to go into each tent and gather food, gather gold, gather clothes, and as they were gathering them, and they said to one another, if we keep silent, this isn't good. And so they went back, and the, the people in the word famine were so still blocked up with unbelief, they said, it's a trick, it's a lie, let's just send out a few people. If they die, well, that doesn't matter. <laughs> send out a few horses, a few men, off you go. And the Bible says that it was true. And the captain on whom the king leaned, the captain on the lead, was given the job directing the traffic of a stampede. I want you to know it's going to be a revival uh, of evangelism. And it'll be all because of the miracles and the work that God's about to release and do it this new season. We have to hope against hope. We have to keep hoping. The only thing I keep that door open was say, God, I'm going to hope against hope. But there doesn't seem to be anything, no evidence, the door is kept open as we keep on hoping in the hand of God brings us through in grace into this new season. Amen? Amen. Can I just have a minute to sit calm? Thank you so much for letting me preach in the longer. But I want you to know that there is a whole new word of hope coming into your situation. And the word of hope always carries with it the answer, the breakthrough. Faith calls those things that be not as though they already are. Amen? <laughs> We're stepping into an incredible year. The year of A.N. Aleph, it's not only the hand of God, but it's the breath of God. It's read from, uh, Hebrew is read from uh, right to left, so it's pronounced hey, but it's the A-H, the breath of God. And God is going to breathe into your life. He's going to breathe into your circumstances. Because when Abram and Sarah, on the fifth encounter, became Abraham and Sarah, I was so excited about this new season. I wanted to change my name. The fake thing. The fake thing. A-H. I could put that in there. Because God inserted his name into Sarah and Abram's life. Fifth encounter, they became Abraham, Sarah. They became pregnant. They became blessed. They became uh, owners and recipients of all the inheritance and promises. He getting ready to step into the inheritance God's got. I don't care if you feel like a leper. 
It feel like you've been through the dead zone. It feel like circumstances have been against you. You've hoped. Now get ready to hope against hope. Even go that bit further. Keeps the door open. The open heavens are going to be over your life. Because the same God, it's the same God. And I love the fact that He used four letters to bring citywide revival. And if we were to take out every prostitute, every broken person, every inferior person, every person that was the least likely to succeed, this would be a very thin volume. But God chose people who have been through hell and back, been through the pits, faced a few giants, walked up a few dark gullets. So now, Lord, I'm going to believe you. And the eye thing going to come out of the pit. The Superman day is going to come out of the wilderness. The Hannah's going to birth. Hallelujah. Well, that man <laughs> has a testimony coming. We just stand right now. Hallelujah. The curtain's about to go up. We've been through a test of endurance. We've been through some challenges. God's superheroes. Hope deferred makes the heart sad as the desires fulfilled becomes a tree of life. 